Hello everybody! And this week I've been having a little bit of a tinkle around with Super Frog HD. So can I please get an intro now? So, Super Frog HD, the latest effort from Team 17. Oh, goodness, where do I begin with this one? Well, okay, let's start with this. In terms of Team 17, I have done, and I actually still do, play a fair bit of Worms. I haven't played all of the games, to be fair, but from what I have played, they're pretty fucking awesome. I think everybody can agree with that one, but what people also tend to agree with are the other products, like Alien Breed and all of the other Team 17 stuff. Everybody seems to agree that they're all pretty fucking good games. Kind of in the style of Sonic, Super Frog has often been considered a perfect example of a game from that genre, so like Sonic and Mario, and upon its release it was pretty critically well acclaimed really, and it's gained a massive fan base, and um, also it did kind of fall under the shadow of worms, but it still did good. So when I was just browsing the PS store looking for something to play, I kind of stumbled across this on the front page. And after seeing how quirky it looked, um, the fact that it was a HD remake, and the fact that it had a near 5 star customer review score, I innocently bought it. And I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, I can only imagine, but guys, for this HD remake, I can't understand the praise, I must say. I mean, as we all know, HD remakes exist purely to get old franchises back into new light and to let old fans of these franchises experience a proper, updated and basically the true brilliance of the ideas that were presented in the game. And in this case, for people like myself, these HD remakes exist to bring and introduce new people into these games and franchises in the most updated and best possible ways. And for Super Frog HD, I'm really not a fan of it. Now from what I understand, this is more or less an exact remake of the original game. So I'm not whenever I criticize the game here, I'm not criticizing anything about the game itself. I'm just gonna be criticizing this HD remake. Because I, I mean I haven't played the original, obviously, but I can only imagine that back in 1993, against Mario and Sonic, this game would have been pretty fucking sweet. The game itself is vibrant, incredibly smooth, with a very upbeat soundtrack, and it really did stand itself along the other weird fucking mascots of the generation. But here's the thing, that was 1993, now it's 2013, 20 years later. And how does this HD remake hold up? Well, like I've said twice already I think in this video, from my first ever experience with Super Frog, I didn't get it, I didn't like it. In this tinker time though, whenever I say something bad about this game, don't take it to heart because I'm not bashing, I haven't got anything against Super Frog himself, it's just... I'm just looking at it as a modern HD remake. Instead of revamping the series and putting a new spin on things, this game seemed to resurrect every other single dated thing about the original and not bother to change anything. The game is a platformer, as you can see, with a time limit, and it's also an optional collectathon. You can breeze past any stage you want, or you could get a higher star rating and a higher score in general by actually taking time to find the very well concealed secret areas and pick up the hundreds of scattered collectibles all over the place. Now I'm just going to say here, in some levels I found every single pickup didn't die once and did it in a good enough time and I did it even faster the next time and the star rating still ends up one star. Someone please fucking explain that to me because I don't get it. But aside from that, first off, like I said, this is actually optional. You can beat the game the same way by just going straight to the ending. And this also would be an issue if this game's level design wasn't such a fucking mess. It's a clusterfuck to the eyes, and it, it's almost maze-like. It just throws everything conceivable right at you, into your face, with no cohesiveness or structure. The, the fact that you can only zoom out the entire screen by having to jump high in the air it's a little bit annoying, especially stuff with like Rayman Origins on the PS Vita anyway. You can just pinch and um, push and pinch and you know that shit to zoom in and out and you can't do that in this, which is very fucking annoying. It does actually feel too much like and look too much like a Worms game, but no, that's not the point. The point is that platforming through a Worms game may sound okay on paper, but in execution it's not very fun at all. Because of this confusing design, this doesn't actually benefit the stages, because even though there are different worlds and different themes in those worlds, every level looks exactly the fucking same. I'll tell you one thing though, this sun disappearing and reappearing is a fucking joke. Sorry for the video quality, but 
I can't do anything about the sun, can I? Anyway, where was I? Oh, oh yeah. Apart from when you actually change worlds, there's no variation in colours or structure or anything in the levels. They all look exactly the same in the circus, the forest, and the castle. Every level just seems like a huge collection of stock and completely forgettable things everywhere. It's a shame because the visuals are pretty fucking good actually, and the animations and the scrolling, it's and it's completely flawless, it's really smooth, but there's just no character, and there's no soul to any of these areas. You're just constantly seeing the same backgrounds, pickups, enemies, objects, and just everything. Talking about enemies, this actually doesn't even help with the enemies either. Because of how convoluted and confusing everything looks, you'll take random hits from things that you wouldn't have even thought were enemies. And even if you did think they were enemies, you can barely see them half the time. And as for how you kill them, it makes no sense at all. Most enemies you can jump on, and other enemies you need to throw this weird fucking pickup thing at them. How do you know what you can and can't jump on? You don't! For example, soft looking things like ghosts and weird gooey slinky looking things, no, you can't jump on them, you have to throw the thing at them. But then sp spiky things like these tiny little bouncy prickly balls and hedgehogs, you can jump on. Combine that with the stale and optional style gameplay and you just get no addictiveness or even relaxation to the whole journey, it's just a pretty forgettable and messy brain jumble. On with the control, it's very interesting to say the least. Super Frog has zero momentum. If you press a move button, Super Frog will just fucking speed off in any direction with no gradual speed up from a walk to a run like Sonic or even Mario. And when you let go of movement, he just stops dead in his tracks. Doesn't even slow down, he just stops. And considering how fast he does move, this becomes a huge pain in the ass. You'll find yourself just randomly trying to subtly move your way around enemies that you can't see, and even some insta-kill, one-hit-to-death objects which blend in lovely with the environment, but you can't move around them because of how finicky the controls are. And hit detection for jumping on enemies is eerily precise. You need to be sure that you're bang dot right in the middle and right on top of all of the enemies that you jump on, otherwise you're gonna take a hit. You know something, I literally just sat here and realised this game is very reminiscent, actually, of Bubsy on Super Nintendo. Incredibly, it's actually the same kind of thing. Messy design, characters that move too quick, um, the camera's too close, no clear definitions on what can hurt you and what you can pick up, um, forgettable and messy environments. Yeah, this is this remake is like Bubsy. Oh, and also, furthermore, the soundtrack. <sighs> okay then. Well, okay, here's the thing. The soundtrack, actually, it's not actually that bad. It's a good soundtrack. It's very, very upbeat, and it's lovely and, like, um, very well themed in every single one of these areas, and all that jazz. But, here's the thing. It gets very annoying after five minutes of having a repeat of it. And it especially gets annoying when you find out that the same soundtrack is used on every single level until you change worlds. And also, for as cool or as quirky this design sounds on paper, Super Frog isn't exactly that super. No major superpowers or anything, really. It's quite a shame, but I think that if you could have added that in for a HD remake, just more powers or just anything like that, that would have been a little bit more beneficial. Anyway, after tinkering around with Super Frog HD, I would have to say that it's actually disreputable. Anyway, that's just something I remembered as well. They use the same sound effects for everything. This is actually turning out kind of like Santa Claus Saves the Earth. Every single fucking thing has the same sound effect. No matter what world you're in, what level, what you do, enemies you encounter, they all have the same sounds. That gets a little bit annoying. Oh my god, I'm gonna upset a lot of people when I do this. Okay guys, okay, why if I've been shitting all over this game, why have I called it disreputable? Why haven't I made it flammable? Well, here's the thing. The HD is actually really crisp and really vibrant. The animations and scrolling are smooth as fuck. And just the graphics overall are really, really great. And finding the secrets in the game is actually kind of a blast. That's, I had a lot of fun with finding the secret areas. Also, the cross-controller gimmick with the PS Vita and the PS3 is also pretty cool. But I think what this game does, not criticising the original game at all, but this game in particular, it's just something of a pointless remake. The only things it really adds to the game are remixed versions of the original levels, which are so similar, there's no fucking point at all, and a little bit of a level editor, which is a very cool addition, but still, it's not really worth it. And even though everything for this game did work brilliantly in 1993, this is 20 years later, and the gameplay and controls haven't been adjusted or met 
or nothing has been changed, nothing has been spiced up, it's just the same thing, and it's just really, really, really dated and really quite unwelcome. Unless you have major nostalgia over Super Frog or just the Amiga days, I probably wouldn't recommend it myself. Especially over the fact that I paid £6.49 for it. I sit here and I think about all the games out there that are around the same price, or even cheaper than this, and yet they offer ten times more than this. Seriously guys, while I think about it, it just makes me ponder where my money actually went. Farewell everybody, and until next time, take care.